welcome back to my channel or if you're new here my name's Alexa Ray. I am so freaking excited for today's video guys like by the title of today's video you guys already know what we are doing <sighs> We are doing a 24 hour readathon vlog, but it is a very specific reading vlog today. We are going to be strictly reading Colleen Hoover book. If you've been around for a hot minute, you know, you already know, Coho is a fan fave over here. She is one of my favorite authors on this channel. I love reviewing her books on this channel. So I am just super excited about today's video because I am obsessed with her writing and her storytelling and we are just going to be reading all Coho books today. My collection of Coho books is big. It's pretty, pretty big. I've been told by many people that it's impressive. That makes me feel really good. So this is my collection of Coho books. <laughs> so with that being said, I think it's safe to say that I'm a big fan. I just really enjoy her writing style, her storytelling, her characters. Perfect. I love all her characters. Every time I pick up one of her books, I cannot put it down. I have to read the whole thing in one sitting. We're focusing on three specific books that I have not read yet, and they're actually pretty new to my collection. I've recently picked them up. The first one is Confess. I've seen this a lot all over Book Talk lately, and a lot of people have recommended me this. You guys say this is such a good one, and it's underrated. So I'm excited to finally be reading it. The next one I have is Regretting You. This is another wrap from you guys that you say is really good but also underrated. I do hear mixed things about this one so I'm nervous but I'm not because I've never read a Coho book that I haven't liked. I know this is one of her green reads so it's more of like a teen read and it's safe to read so if you're like a teenager and stuff and you really want to get into Coho I hear this is a really great starter up. And then the third book I have that we may get to in this reading vlog is Layla. This one looks kind of spooky to me. I don't know what's going on here, but <laughs> sometimes her book covers are like... I have not seen or heard too much about this one, so I don't know what to expect. These are the three books that we're going to be focusing on today in my massive 24-hour readathon vlog. I'm super excited. I'm so glad you guys are here. I'm so happy to be here. So without further ado, let's jump into the readathon. I am a little bit more comfortable now. I'm in a cozy crew neck. I have my hair up. <gasps> my glasses. I need my glasses. Now we are ready to start this readathon. Also, before we jump into this, I just want to let all of you know that this is going to be a spoiler free reading vlog. So if you haven't read these books yet, this is totally safe to watch. And I'll probably do a small spoiler section like towards the end of each book, but you can just skip over those for the most part. This is going to be spoiler free. This is safe to watch if you haven't read them yet. So excited. The first book I'm going to start with is Regretting You. I really want to read it because so many people have mixed feelings about it so I kind of want to see for myself like what it's all about so we are going to get a brief summary of what this is all about how do you pick up the pieces without the glue holding everything together Morgan Grant and her 16 year old daughter Clara would like nothing more than to be nothing alike Morgan is determined to prevent her daughter from making the same mistake she did by getting pregnant and married way too young Morgan put her own dreams on hold Clara doesn't want to follow in her mother's footsteps her predictable mother doesn't have a spontaneous bone in her body okay so mother daughter relationship. With warring personalities and conflicting goals, Morgan and Clara find it increasingly difficult to coexist. The only person who can bring peace to the household is Chris, Morgan's husband, Clara's father, and the family anchor. But that peace is shattered when Chris is involved in a tragic and questionable accident. The heartbreaking and long-lasting consequences will reach far beyond just Morgan and Clara. While struggling to rebuild everything that crashed around them, Morgan finds comfort in the last person she expects to, and Clara turns to the one boy she's been forbidden to see. With each passing day, new secrets, resentment, and misunderstandings make mother and daughter fall further apart. So far apart, it might be impossible for them to ever fall back together. So this is going to be a interesting read. I'm excited. We are going to hop right into this. So I've just read the first two chapters of this book. It is a dual chapter book, so it jumps back and forth between characters, except this one jumps back and forth between Clara and Morgan, the mother and daughter in it. So I think that's really cool because I've only ever read love interest dual reads. So this is really cool to see. So the first chapter kind 
kind of gives us like an intro into Morgan's life and like Chris's life and like how Clara came about and all of that. We also meet Jenny who is Morgan's little sister and Jonah who is like the best friend of Chris but also like really close friends with Morgan. And then chapter two jumps ahead to real time in the story and we're introduced to Clara, Morgan's daughter. I think she's like 16 going on 17 or something. And we're introduced to her. We're also introduced to Miller Adams, a boy in the story that Clara is kind of like talking to. I don't think I mentioned this, but Jonah and Jenny were introduced earlier on. Jenny is Morgan's sister and Jonah's like the best friend of the group. They're also like dating and their whole story is kind of crazy in this, but there's like this weird tension between Jonah and Morgan and it's like weird. I don't know what to think about it. I feel like even after reading like the first three or four chapters, I'm kind of already predicting what's going to happen in this. Just because Morgan and Jonah are so similar and alike and Chris and Jenny are so similar and alike and Morgan in the beginning kind of talks about how opposites attract but I just don't think that's like the case in this story. Also Jenny's like the cool fun aunt. Clara's really close with her aunt Jenny. I think she's like her role model or whatever because she asked Jenny for all the advice with everything to do in life instead of like going to her mom. For some reason there's like this weird disconnect with Clara and Morgan. I don't know why. I think it's just because Clara feels that her mother's really overbearing and overprotective. There's like a weird disconnect and miscommunication there. I can literally... <laughs> I feel like I already know what's gonna happen. This is very predictable. Like they haven't said it, okay? They haven't said it yet. But there is just this weird feeling I have that there's something between these characters. I don't know. I don't know, I'm not gonna say it, but I just feel like this is very predictable so far for only being on page 36. This is pretty predictable. And I feel funny saying that because in a recent video, an unpopular opinion that Coho books were too predictable. And now I feel like I'm seeing it. Miller Adams. I like him. I think he's like cute in like a vibe in this. I feel like there's something we're missing to his story so far. I don't know. He seems like that bad boy that no one likes for some reason, but like he doesn't really come across as a bad boy to me. I don't know if that like makes sense but Claire's dad claims that he's just like not a good influence to be around and he doesn't want Clara hanging around him. I don't know why he doesn't give me that vibe but maybe he is a bad kid. I don't know. So far I really like his character so I'm hoping he doesn't end up being like a bad person but what's happening so clara's in her class right now and jonah's actually a teacher at her school she's in his class right now and in the middle of class she's texting her aunt jenny things are getting weird to say the least i don't want to say i told you so or that like i knew this was gonna happen but like i kind of knew it was gonna happen Okay, I did not see this part of the book coming. It's like really sad, but really weird at the same time. So this must be the tragedy that we were forewarned about on the back of the book. This is a lot and it's kind of sad and I feel really bad for everyone in this story right now. This is not going to end well for Clara and Miller. Like, I don't know why they think this is a good idea. Like, on this day to do this, why are people so dumb sometimes? What? Okay, I take it back. Her books aren't predictable. I'm like kind of disturbed, honestly, right now. Like, low-key disturbed with how this story's going. <laughs> literally contemplating everything I was thinking before. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's gonna happen. I wish I had moves like this when I was like 16. When I was 16, I was super quiet and awkward and I didn't like wanna talk to anybody because I was so shy and awkward. And Clara's out here just like rolling with it. Like she knows exactly what she's doing, even though she doesn't. I wish I had her confidence. Okay, so we're kind of getting a little bit into the mother-daughter conflict and I hate it. Since I'm reading both perspectives, I know what's going on in both their lives, but they obviously don't know what's going on in each other's lives. Seeing them argue about these things that I know about, but like they don't know about, it's kind of annoying as the reader. I'm reading this and I'm like, oh my gosh, stop fighting. Like you don't even get it. You don't even understand. I understand, but you don't understand. 
on how does she write some of the best characters. I guess I'm just gonna take the next few seconds to talk about how much I really adore Miller. I just feel like he's so cute and sweet and at the same time I think he's very misunderstood by people. Wow, I'm just like, I adore him so much. <laughs> okay, wow, I am really on the Miller train right now. <laughs> there's like proof like all of their questions could be answered right now and they're not gonna like take advantage of that i've literally been waiting for this to happen the entire book and it's finally happening and i'm so excited because like i've literally been waiting for this to happen okay i'm on page 186 if you're reading along with me you know what's going on right now i actually am really loving this part in the book because i feel like they're just kind of having this moment they're getting this sense of closure almost like therapy in a weird way i don't know I really just want to share this quote in the book because I feel like it's so relatable and so true in life. It disappoints me a little. Sometimes I feel like being an adult is so much easier than being a teenager because you should have it all figured out as an adult. You're more emotionally mature so you can handle crisis better. But seeing Jonah right now as he tries to pretend he's not distracted and watching my mother try to navigate her life is all the proof I need that grown-ups might not have their shit figured out any more than we do. They just wear more convincing masks. I just thought that was really enlightening. The sun will come out tomorrow. Okay, yeah, I totally saw this coming. I can't even pretend like I didn't. I knew this part was definitely coming because like, I can't imagine having that much emotion and feelings built up in me for over 17 years. I feel like this book really just shows you that you have to tell people how you feel when you feel that way because if you don't, it might be too late and you might lose your chance. Just tell people how you feel about them. Problem solved. Clara. I feel like in the heat of the moment, I get it, but at the same time, she kind of takes it a little too far. I think Clara is being very over dramatic at the moment. Okay, yeah, Clara, girl, you're being dramatic. You're kind of being bratty. <laughs> She's literally throwing like a temper tantrum right now. I feel like everyone needs a Jonah in their life, like just super understanding and supportive. We are almost done with this book. We're on page 267. What's gonna happen? Like how how are they going to fix this? Communication is key. Yes! This is what Coho does to me. I'm happy that this is where we're at. I'm on page 278. If you're reading along, you know. <coughs> been waiting for this scene the entire book more so than the last time i said i was waiting for it i've been hardcore waiting for this it can only go up from here we've hit rock bottom it can only go up it's happening the truth is coming out it's happening it's about time it is about freaking time this is the part that i've been waiting for forget all the other parts i said i was waiting for this is the part i've been waiting for finally communication communication guys <laughs> I feel all disheveled after finishing this book. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Hey, the sun has come out. Okay, guys, we have finished Regretting You by Colleen Hoover. Wow. Okay, just wow. This was a really different read for me for a coho book. Usually her books are pretty different, but at the same time, I still got that crazy storyline plot twist. I enjoyed it a lot. I thought it was really cool, and I also really liked the mother-daughter perspectives. I thought that was so different and neat to get the perspectives of both of them and see the different relationships forming in both their lives. It was good. I enjoyed the story. I enjoyed the characters per usual. The characters are so freaking good in her stories. I don't even know how she does it, okay? I don't even know how she comes up with these perfect characters. In the ending, I was just like literally sobbing, I guess you could say. I literally shed a few tears and I was like, wow, this is, this is it. This is coho for me. I'm crying at the end of the book. So without giving the main idea away, Morgan and Clara basically navigate their lives as mother and daughter they clash a lot. I think communication is a very big important key factor in that. They weren't communicating and it's really important to communicate. Communication is key in any type of relationship. That's like the main lesson <laughs> I feel like I got out of this. As for a book rating, I would give this a four out of five star book rating. I can't give it a five star rating just because there's certain things in it that I wish were just a tad different. Not too much. I wouldn't change too much. It's just like a few little things that I'm like, are you kidding me? 
and love Coho books, guys. And this was nothing short of amazing. If you haven't read this book yet, definitely skip ahead. I'm gonna talk about a few little spoilers that happened in this book. If you have read the book, stick around so we can talk about these spoilers because I know that we are probably thinking the exact same thing right now. Skip ahead to the next timestamp if you haven't read this book. If you have read this book, stick around. Okay, spoiler section of this book. <laughs> guys, what? So many mixed emotions. I literally cried at the end. First of all, let's talk about the fact that Chris and Jenny cheated on the most important people in their life. That was twisted. I saw it coming in a weird way. But the whole car accident thing, I didn't see coming. Like, I didn't know Koho was just gonna kill them off. What? I really liked the development of Morgan and Jonah's relationship, and I liked the development of Clara and Miller's relationship. I thought they were just really cute and sweet. Jonah was adorable. I mean, the fact that Elijah isn't his son, I wish they would have, like, clarified more on that, done a test to just make sure it's true, because you never know. You really don't. I also loved how cute and sweet Miller was. I loved Gramps. He was so freaking funny. Gramps was my favorite favorite character. The letters I think was a huge thing that kind of knocked this from a five star down to a four star for me. I really just wanted them to read the letter. Why couldn't they give us that closure? As readers, I feel like we needed that closure. I really wanted to know what those letters said. Part of me was like, what if what if it was something twisted? What if it was something more? Like, I know they cheated, but what if they didn't? I don't know. But you know what? If they would have read the letters, we would have known. The one thing I really loved in this book and the best part of it for me was probably the end of it when Miller made that cute little docu slash video for him and Clara. I just thought that was so cute. Like I started sobbing. I was like, what? What is this? But overall, I really enjoyed this book. I thought it was amazing. I would recommend this, especially to people who don't like spicy types of romances. Four out of five stars for me and our first coho book of the reading vlog. Oh gosh, what is going on with my hair today? Well, this is not working, so the hair is coming down. So guys, hi. We are going to jump right into the next Coho book, and that is Confess. Oh, I'm so excited. I know it's kind of about like an artist. I did accidentally take a peek inside the book, I know, but I saw that there were like actual pictures of artwork in the book, and I was just like, <gasps> I'm so excited. We are gonna jump into this book, get a little background on it. Auburn Reed has lost everything important to her. In her fight to rebuild her shattered life, she has her goals in sight and there's no room for mistakes. But when she walks into a Dallas art studio in search of a job, this kind of sounds like reminders of him to me. If you guys have read that book, let me know. Do you think it's like reminders of him? But when she walks into a Dallas art studio in search of a job, she doesn't expect to find a deep attraction to the artist who works there. For once, Auburn takes a chance and puts her heart in control, only to discover that Owen is keeping a major secret from coming out. The magnitude of his past threatens to destroy everything Auburn loves most, and the only way to get her life back on track is to cut Owen out of it. To save their relationship, all Owen needs to do is confess. But in this case, the confession could be much more destructive than the actual sin. We are gonna jump right into this. I always love reading the dedications in the beginning of the book. Like just like the little quotes that authors sometimes put in. This one is actually really cool and interesting. I'm gonna share it with you guys. I don't think it's really a spoiler. It's just like a fun fact to know about the book. And it says the confessions you read within this novel are true confessions submitted anonymously by readers. This book is dedicated to all of you who found the courage to share them. That's really cool that she put real life confessions in it from real people. I love that. I just think that is such a cool little add-in. How is she gonna hit us with that first chapter in the book? How is she gonna make me want to cry when we're only 10 pages in? Why you gotta do that to me? Why you gotta do that to us? I don't know. It was just a really heavy introduction. It's kind of like this for all books, but what I really love about Colleen Hoover books is her titles are always in the book. So this book is called Confess. Confess is the name of like this showroom. It's like an artist studio where people go and view art and buy art. I just always get excited when I find the title in her books. I'm always looking for it. It's the name of an art studio where people drop off confessions. So this is hitting me hard. We're going from regretting you to this. I'm only on page 14 and it's like already. So we met Owen. Owen is an artist in the story. He happens to be the artist who owns this studio called Confess. Takes people's confessions and turns them into pieces of art. So cool. I think that is such a cool 
concept. He's basically asking Auburn to help him out for a night at his studio. I like his vibe. I don't know. He just gives me this really cool, good, warm vibe. He seems perfect. Per usual, Coho writes the perfect male leads. Also, this is another dual perspective book. So we are going between Auburn and Owen's perspectives. I love that. I love that Colleen Hoover does that in like all her books. You see the perspective of everyone. It's so cool. So Auburn lives with a roommate and her apartment number is 1408. If you're not familiar, 1408 is actually a scary slash thriller movie with John Cusack and it's actually one of the first scary movies I saw when I was little that traumatized me. I just thought I'd throw that out there. I'll paint you from memory, he says as he releases my face. Fine by me. Why? Why is she gonna do that to us? Why is she gonna do that to these characters? Sometimes I just wish it was a perfect book and nothing bad ever happened. We are on chapter eight. It is page 100. Owen got a call from Harrison at 1 a.m. in the morning. Harrison called Owen and told him that he has something for him and that he needs to come and get it because he's trying to close his bar. Can only imagine what he has for Owen. I love when like books give me butterflies. I just love that feeling. It seems like picture perfect right now. I know there's gonna be a wrench thrown into this perfect picture, but I love it right now and I'm trying to enjoy it while I can. We're on page 131, chapter 10. First sentence, I'm losing track of all the lies. So here comes the wrench. Love this idea. When Owen was younger, his dad would bring him and his brother to the toy store, but they weren't allowed to just pick any toy. He would have them pick an aisle number and a shelf number and whichever one they picked would be the shelf that they would pick a toy off of. It's such a cute idea. And he basically just had Auburn do the same thing. So cute. Literally going to use that. I don't know what's going on. Okay. Like they've only known each other for like a day and the things they're saying. Okay. N no. I did not see this coming. I did not expect this. We did just get one of Auburn's major confessions. I have so many questions. And like Owen is handling it so well, so differently than what I would expect someone to handle this news with. And it just makes me like love him more as a character. Okay, Trey, not a vibe. I haven't really vibed with him since he first came into this book. I don't like him. I don't get a good vibe from him. I don't know what it is. He's honestly just kind of messing everything up. I guess he's the wrench in this perfect story. That's what I'm getting at. Owen, so good. So how does she write these perfect male leads? I don't know. I don't know how she does it. So cute. So freaking cute. Like she makes you love these characters even if they do something bad, like you still love them. I can't show you because I don't want to spoil this part for you. But halfway through this book, you're gonna get to a point where you're just like in awe of like looking at this. I knew it. I, I knew it. I I just knew it. I feel like this kind of hits home in a weird way. Like I definitely kind of relate to this scene in the book and it makes me really sad thinking about it. I knew it wasn't him. Like I knew he wasn't capable of this and it makes my heart so happy but so sad at the same time. Again, it's like one of those moments where you're the reader and you're seeing everyone's perspective and you know the full story and you just want them to communicate and tell each other the truth. Everything would be so much easier if people just communicate it. Why? I get it. I get it, Auburn. I know why you're doing it. So many red flags. So many red flags and bad signs. I just feel like there's other ways. It's one of those moments again that I relate to and I hate it because it's so sad. Like We are on chapter 17, page 221. We are almost done with this book and uh, we still have a little bit to go but I already feel like this is one of my favorite coho books. It's that point in the book where we've been rooting for it the whole time. We've been waiting for it and it's happening. This is so bad. I hate it. Emery, Auburn's roommate, she is so great and amazing. Love her in this moment. I feel like she's not in this story enough. I kind of wish there were more scenes with Emery in it, but I'm happy that she's getting her moment to shine. I knew something like this was going to happen. We're like at the end too, like what's gonna happen? I don't know what I'm gonna do now. I don't know how I'm just going to return to normal life. 
after this book. It was just the craziest book ending I think I've ever read. Do you ever read a book like that and it ends and you're just like, how do I go back to normal life? It was absolutely bonkers. He's having the same feelings I am right now, guys. We just don't know what to do with ourselves. Okay, guys, we have just finished up Confess by Colleen Hoover. Wow, just wow. I'm just gonna come out and say it. This is one of my favorite Coho books I've ever read. Five out of five stars. I really enjoyed the whole storyline of this. I didn't see it coming. Like, I didn't see it the main craziness of this story coming like I did in Regretting You. I feel like Regretting You was a little bit predictable in some parts of it, whereas in this, I didn't find this predictable. I really enjoyed this. I really enjoyed the art aspect of it. I thought it was so, so cool tying confessions to art. I just thought that was a really cool idea and I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed Auburn and Owen's storyline and their confessions along the way. And now we're gonna take a moment and jump into a little spoiler section for this book so if you haven't read this book skip ahead to the next timestamp so I don't spoil anything for you but if you have read this book stick around and we can chit chat about a few things that happened in this book because there are some things that I just need to get out and I feel like we all know what that is so the spoiler section of this video remember if you haven't read this book don't watch this portion jump to the next timestamp the main spoiler that I just need to talk about and I think it's the most important one is the fact that Owen knew Adam and Auburn. That was just the most shocking thing. The canvas, the piece of art that Owen makes and shows Adam and then has sent out to Auburn that hangs in her apartment when her and Owen are together again in the future. I just love how there's those little details in there that Colleen Hoover puts in her books. That made my heart so happy. The piece of art that he created was so beautiful. The hands like reaching for each other. Something I do wish that was a more more elaborated in the story and maybe had more detail was Lydia. We didn't get a lot of background on her as Adam's mother. Also wish that we had more background on Adam. Even though he wasn't a big part of the story, he still was a major part of Auburn and her story. And I kind of wish we just had more detail on him. Five Star Read for me, one of my favorite, favorite Coho books. She never fails us. I feel like Coho never fails us. And I appreciate her for that. Okay guys, that is all for our Colleen Hoover Readathon vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had fun. I know I did. Just a little recap of what we did in today's video. We went and read two Colleen Hoover books, Regretting You and Confess. These two books have been recommended to me for so long now. I'm so happy we were finally able to read them. I would definitely say these are both very underrated coho books. I don't see a lot about these books, so I definitely think they're underrated. These were really, really good coho books. Confess is definitely one of my favorite coho books. This is, wow, five-star read for me. I absolutely absolutely love this storyline. I thought it was so, so cool. It's one of my favorite storylines. That's all I could really say. Regretting You was super fun to read because it was a different type of story for me, especially coming from Colleen Hoover. It was a lot different than her normal stories, and I just really liked the mother-daughter relationship in it. I thought it was really cool. It was really neat. It was different. Colleen Hoover comes up with the craziest storylines and the plot twist. I think that's why I enjoy her books so much. Two really great underrated coho books. I definitely recommend these. These are such good reads. Thank you so much to you guys because you guys recommended me these books. You guys are the reason why I actually got into Colleen Hoover books in the first place. She's not one of my favorite authors. So with that being said, don't forget to comment down below any book recs you have for me. I'm here for everything. I love it. And of course, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up because it really helps me out. It lets me know that you like these types of videos. And of course, don't forget to subscribe down below. If you'd like to see more of me, I post weekly guys. I post weekly. It's basically free entertainment every single week. You might as well subscribe. Thank you so much for being here and for all your support. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you in my next video.